The illusion of competence. What is it, and how does it affect us as Christians? We're going to be talking about that today. You're having coffee with Conrad on... Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you, and you know my passion is for you. Yes, you have a spiritual relationship with a biblical Jesus. Now, today we're going to be talking about the illusion of competence. And we can be following the spirit of truth. You know, the spirit of truth guides us into all truth. But if we don't test these things, if we don't actually walk what we're what the Spirit of Truth is illuminating in Scripture, and we may think that we know something, and we, we, we don't. So today, we're going to be talking about that. Buckle up! Okay, this is one of those things where people, they don't know that they have the problem, right? So um, one of my friends, he's an evangelist from Alabama, he told me one time, he says, Conrad, people before people need a cure, they need to know that they have a problem. And he used this idea that people need to know that they have cancer. There's a lot of people walking around not knowing that they have cancer until they run into a problem. And then you can minister to them a cure. And he's talking about the gospel. People don't know they need a savior, right? That's why you need preachers sent to them to say, hey, you have a there's a sin problem and there's a very real problem. Well today, with the illusion of competence, there's a lot of us walking around, and we don't know that we have this problem. However, Scripture does even talk about it. So we're going to dive into it. We are having coffee with Conrad at ConradRocks.net. Jesus <laughs> So exactly what is this illusion of competence? Um, illusion of competence, it's a state where we think we think we have assimilated some information when, in fact, we have not. It's still outside of us. It is not internalized. It's not part of who we are. The illusion of competence is closely related to confirmation bias, which I talk about quite often on my podcast. Um, this confirmation bias, we think we know something. We keep gathering information. We go down these these rabbit holes. We're doing our research, we think but we're not actually testing it to see if these ideas and theories work in, in the real world, if they're in fact true. It's kind of like Monday morning quarterbacking uh, without ever actually playing football, without knowing the nuances of every position of the game or coaching it. It's We're Monday morning quarterbacks. That's what it's like. So when we're reading a book, okay, I want you to think about a book that you read, maybe you know recently or some web pages or whatever, a blog, and then you're excited about something that you learn, okay? You're excited about it, okay? And you're like, oh, wow, this is cool. Then you try to explain it to people, and you realize, hey, I've got some gaps in my knowledge here. Uh, I need to go back to the book and revisit it. Now, when we have the illusion of competence, we can over-respond and echo, you know, all these rabbit trails with all these other people that suffer from the illusion of competence. Once you think about this, you'll go, wow, this is a really big problem in the Christian community. Now, when we have the illusion of competence, it's the illusion, we tend not to notice uh, that the crutches, okay, if we can only answer the questions with the solution nearby, for example, like our books right here on our desk, or if we can only remember definitions while we're holding the flash card. Uh, or we have to Google it, or we have to go back to the book. So that is what the illusion of competence is. You think you know something, and you find out when you run into actually having to, to use this knowledge that you fall short. The Bible actually talks about this, you know, from a, they use different words. But here's some scriptures that say we need to actually put things into practice. You know, James says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving our own selves. And then the Hebrews talks about having our senses exercised by reason of use. So let's unpack James here. Um, James, in one twenty-two through 25, James says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, okay? Doing the word. You do it, <laughs> okay? Not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I mean, that sums up the illusion of competence. 
we're deceiving ourselves. And then he goes on to unpack this a little further. He says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Some versions say mirror, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, and being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, here, he says, if we hear only, we are deceiving ourselves. When we look in the mirror, uh, or the glass, in this King James Version, um, he says we're beholding ourselves. We're comparing ourselves to Scripture. Where are we? in the faith. The Bible says to examine ourselves, right? And once we hear or read, we leave, and then we forget what what we are, right? So then he says, uh, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, right? This is like John 8.31. Jesus says, continue in the word. Um, let's go to that, I guess. Jesus says in John 8.31.32, He talks to those Jews that believe on him, and he says, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. Notice here, continuing in the word. In other words, doing what you read, the words of Jesus in red, and then your disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. In other words, you're not going to have the illusion of competence, and the truth will make you free. So this echoes what James is saying here of we continue in the word, do it, and then we'll know the truth, not just being hearers only, and then we're going to be made free. Okay, so we've done James there. Let's go down to what Hebrews says something very similar, okay? for And this is a great illustration of the illusion of competence. These two passages are. They're in, in what Jesus said, too. For when the time you ought to be teachers. Okay, so there's time going by, and they should be teachers. You have need that one teacheth you again, be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become as such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Skill means it's something that you practice, Right? shooting a bow and arrow. (laughs) You got to shoot that bow and arrow. You can't just read about it, right? Unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's obeyed, but strong meat belongeth to them who are of full age, even those who, what? By reason of use. They're using what they read, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Isn't that like Jesus saying, you continue in the words, you're my disciples indeed, and then you'll know the truth? and the truth will make you free, you're going to discern good and evil. So here in Hebrews, time passes. They should improve, okay? They should be teachers, but they're not. They're still splashing around in the milk. God is calling you higher. He's calling me higher. He's calling us to that next level. So these people went away from the mirror that we read in James, what the Bible says, what Jesus says, and they just stayed in the milk. So now, by reason of use, um, like words of knowledge is a great example. Okay, when you get revelation about someone, okay, you're only in one part of the aspect. How do you deliver that word? Where did the revelation come from? Okay, um, do you say it or do you pray it? I mean, there's many nuances, there are many things to learn about words of knowledge, but you learn as you go. It's kind of like Jesus when he's taking the disciples, you know, let's go across the water, guys. And then here comes this demoniac running 100 miles an hour right at him, you know, with chains and blood and all that stuff. And Jesus casts it out. You know, he's showing them on the job. They're actually doing what they read about or what he talked to them earlier about. Amen. All right. This is Conrad from the future. I realized I needed to add this part into the podcast. Now, speaking of the future, everything we think today and that we do today, we're sowing into our future selves. So we need to be future minded in that sense, because we're going to stand before Jesus one day. What do we want to hear? Well done or depart from me. So this is very related to the illusion of competence. Jesus nails it here and warns us about it, okay? Uh, This is Matthew 7, 24 through 27. This is right after the false prophets in 7, 21 through 23. So here we go. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, 
I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, doeth them not, doesn't do them, right? Shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So notice here that when we hear, you know, this is kind of like John 8, 31, 32, if we continue in the words of Jesus, right, we're going to know the truth, because these floods are going to come, these rains are going to eventually come, in our theology, and all, all of our wisdom is going to be tested, there's going to be trials. Jesus pretty much guarantees it, okay? So when we hear these sayings of Jesus, and like John eight thirty one says, you know, continue in his words, Jesus is saying, do them, right? And then if we do them, we're going to know because the tri- they're going to be able to withstand the trials. A house that's built upon a rock is not speculation. It is not succumbing to the illusion of competence. It's founded upon a rock. It has stood the test of time. It has stood the test of trials. Now, notice something else here. Uh, we, we are the ones, like Paul says, who is that wise master builder. There's no other foundation that can be laid than Christ, and then we're building upon that foundation. Here we are. We are the ones responsible for building the houses. It, we don't just walk down the street and have perfect theology, okay? So that's why, you know, in one of my podcasts, I talk about experiential theology. We need to experience this. Uh, experience the stuff that Jesus has taught us, and that comes from reading, keeping, and doing the words, and then we will persevere through these trials, and we'll stand before Jesus someday and says, hey, you built your house upon the rock. Amen? Now, I know y'all have heard me refer to the learning pyramid before, but the illusion of competence kind of works with this learning pyramid idea. Um, the learning pyramid There's many different studies, and and the percentages are a little bit different, but the ballpark idea is the same. Okay, uh, here's what it looks like. Basically, um, if you're, you know, retention leaves really quickly. Like, if you have listened to a lecture, like the monologue, you always hear me talking about the monologues, (laughs) Uh, and then we run off the lubies. Lecturing is the least effective way to learn something. It's the least effective. Now, think if you want to, if you want to learn how to play a piano, okay, you're not going to actually learn how to play the piano by listening to a lecture. Excellent illustration of the illusion of competence, right? Then there's reading, uh, which is like 10%. Um, we can retain, you know, a little bit more from reading. 20% audio visual. You know, we learn a lot from YouTube, but think about it. We're not really learning from YouTube until we go down here and do the practice doing, right? So then there's demonstration. Somebody can demonstrate, actually show us how to play the piano. Okay. They can actually not just talk about it. Uh, They're not just talking about it like a lecture. You're not just reading the manual, but you're seeing someone go, oh, this is how you turn on this keyboard. And this is how you mess with the volume switches and all that stuff. They start demonstrating it and you remember a little bit more. And then when you get to talk about it, this is what I like about group Bible studies, okay? You discuss things. Um, You discuss where people are at in their current knowledge in the Bible, and they remember even more. Because these are things, when you discuss something, people are invariably discussing things that they have the next question about or they're interested in. And I believe that that somehow solidifies what we remember because we're dis- we're discussing things that interest us at the moment. That's my theory. Then if you practice doing it, in other words, you just stop reading about it, you stop listening about it, you stop watching YouTube videos, but you start practice doing it. Dude, I don't know how many times I've had the manual on one screen or the YouTube video on one screen and then the software on the next, and I'm just start doing it. Okay, that's that crutch. I have to do the crutch, but eventually I no longer need the crutch of the manual. I no longer need the crutch of the PDF, right? And then 
a higher level of learning something, and this is this is where you no longer have the illusion of competence, but you feel confident in understanding the subject, like words of knowledge or whatever it is, is when you attempt to teach others because they're going to ask you questions, right? Questions, and then you're going to go, oh, either you know or you don't know. But when you do that, all that information uh, that you retain from practicing doing it and talking about it, it's going to like piggyback. It's got somehow piggyback with that other stuff that you learn because you're teaching others. So this illusion of competence you, you find up here because you're really not retaining the information until you start practice doing it and teaching others. So by now, I think you know what, how we apply this in our Christian walk. We went over some of the scriptures, but I wanted to talk about some of the ideas that I had and uh, just solidify it a little bit more. We need to be aware that reading, and even, you know, when we're guided by the spirit of truth, we still need to walk it out. Reading is the beginning of learning. And when we know something, it's when, when it's assimilated, when it becomes part of us, we no longer need a crutch, okay? So we need to practice what we read in Scripture, actually practice it, right? And the Bible talks about remembering the Sabbath. Put these things as frontlets between your eyes. The book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but in it you should meditate day and night, and with it you will have good success. The idea is to continue in the words of Jesus, then we'll be his disciples indeed, and we'll know the truth and truth will make us free. So we're going to practice what we what Jesus said. We're going to practice what he told us to do. Now, these are poor substitutes, but they are substitutes, okay? I use active recall and space repetition. You know, every time I highlight something, it becomes an action item. I'm going to revisit it later. But active recall and space repetition fall far, far short of actually doing the thing, okay? Like I gave you the Hindenburg as some of my software, I memorize all sorts of shortcuts, but then, you know, just doing my flashcards. But then when I was actually using this software, I'm like, I di didn't even think about the space repetition. Now, we need to ask ourselves questions. Where are we and where do we need to go, right? So we always need to go to this next level. We need to find mentors in our call, you know, like Elisha discipled, was discipled by Elijah, like Paul discipled Timothy. We need to find mentors in our call and get discipled. Let this be a never-ending, constant improvement in the areas that God has laid before us to walk in. So we learn by operating in our call, and we pursue you know, our call uh, our, by pursuing our ideal future self, God's call on our life. What has he called us to be? Many are called, but few are chosen. The ones that are chosen are the ones that discipline themselves in the areas of their call. There can only be one Super Bowl winning quarterback per year, okay? And he didn't just read about it. He didn't just read how to throw a football. Do you know what I'm saying? So at five years old, he saw that vision. Without a vision, my people perish, right? He's like, hey, I'm supposed to be the Super Bowl winning quarterback. And then he disciplined himself all the way up there. Same thing, it works with God. When God calls you into the prophetic, you don't just imagine, you know, you need to, you need to study it, right? And you not only need to read about it, be mentored about it, you actually need to go out and do it. And that's why in 1 Corinthians 14, they talk about the prophets, uh, one practicing prophetic is what it is, and the others judge. They're training him up. In the little Johns, uh, he talks about how there's young children and then grown men, and then he, then he gets to this point. He's teaching them they no longer need a teacher. He goes, okay, you're up to this point. You are no longer walking in the illusion of competence. You are hear, hearing from the Spirit of God, and you need that no one teach you. He got up to that point. Okay, so if you made it this far in the podcast, I want to invite you to try Script. It is unlimited ebooks, audiobooks. It is awesome. And there's these snapshots, which are kind of like Blinkist. This is where the people at Script condense books into like, you know, three minutes to 10 minutes, just the important parts. You can learn a lot real quick this way. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. You can read unlimited free for 60 days unlimited audiobooks for 60 days just to try it out and thank you for scrib for allowing the listeners to the coffee with conrad podcast at conradrocks.net get these two free months that's amazing 
God bless you. I want to thank you for being in my life. If this has touched you, please share this with your friends and family on social media. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comraderocks.net.